Hello, everyone. How are y'all doing? Isn't this amazing? Like, I got the highest vibe in spot. Okay, guys, my son, thank you for sharing your energy. It's going to be challenging. It's been a challenging day. So y'all, please bear with me. Give it to mommy. He wanted to add his sacred energy. And hopefully he only does it this once, because this could be distracting. I love you, pumpkin. Hey, Seth, move. Go. I love you. I love you. No, it's been, this is a tornado day. Like, it's just crazy. So let's take a deep breath, because I need one. And I'd like us to begin, as we usually do, by thinking of three things we're grateful for. Oh, and by the way, to add to the stress, I also caught the blanket on fire. Oh, he wants my phone, and he broke my phone. <laughs> Angels, please let him go to me. So I caught the blanket on fire already. <laughs> so when I say it's like one thing after the other, like the kid comes, I caught the blanket on fire. Yeah, it's all burned up. I had to move all the little fires over here. But at least it was before we started filming, right? Okay, so we got a powerful inner child teaching. Let me light up some sage there to cleanse like the negative energy I felt from like burning the blanket. And from all the disruptions with my son, um, I'm hoping it's not going to be distracting, you know, right? So let's cleanse our energy and let's um, start by thinking of three things we're grateful for. I'm grateful for this blue hunter, full moon, and Taurus. Whenever you have two full moons in one month, it's a blue moon. I was like, I hope it'll catch my hair on fire next. I'm in a weird mood. I'm in a good mood. Okay. So I'm grateful for this hunter, blue moon, and Taurus. Give us an opportunity to all come together and have ceremony, right? I'm also grateful to each of you. And I always say this, you know, for showing me your support. But I never really tell y'all why I do live and why I feel it's such a need to share my message on such a big platform. And I'm gonna tell you why. Um, anyone who follows me knows um, I'm a recovering addict and um, been clean about eight years, well, of opiates. And um, I had a $5,000 a month drug habit for five years with no job. I was not what you consider a good person. Um, I racked up a lot of negative karma. And when you come and you meet with me on this platform and you give me an opportunity to share my wisdom with you, it allows me to write some of that negative karma that I racked up. So that's why I always do lives. Okay, guys, so that was a phone call coming in, and my phone's on do not disturb. As I was saying, it's just the kind of day it's been, right? But I'm not a quitter, and I don't let anything deter me, right? So I just wanted to, the second thing I'm grateful for today is to you, because y'all always tune in and give me an opportunity to share my wisdom with you, which allows me to right some of the wrongs. Um, that I created when I was an addict. You know, um, I did a lot of bad things to a lot of people. And in order to balance those karmic scales, it's very important now that I be in service to my community. And y'all give me the opportunity to be in service, and for that, I am grateful. I will also, for those of you who are in recovery, 
I will be participating in the refuge recovery meetings um, in my local area. They have a Zoom call every Tuesday. So for those of you who aren't in my area, if you are battling with addiction and would like to speak more with me and um, also allow, you know, give me a place to hear me share my testimonial because I will be sharing the gory details of my addict life um, with the individuals in the spiritual community looking to heal from their own um, addiction issues. So um, I'll be posting stuff to my page about the refuge recovery group. But this isn't the place for that sharing, right? Mm -hmm. All the de gory details of how bad of a person I That was crazy. It's the Mercury Richard Day. It's like, it's another phone call. No one's called my phone all day. The second I sit down to do this, I'm getting called back after back, and I have my phone on Do Not Disturb. So, huh. okay. I'm going to get through this thing. So, the third thing that I'm grateful for is that my birthday's tomorrow, right? And Spirit gave me my present. And my present was a couple of days ago, I think uh, Friday, I had a huge breakthrough on the inner child work I'm doing. Enormous breakthrough. Um, and that was my present from Spirit. And I want to share with you the wisdom that was shared with me. Basically, the way that the gift from the universe came through, the guidance I got was I posted a post saying I need a guidance on a matter because I didn't trust my own intuition. And a bunch of people commented, it was really great, but one particular person, Mandola Sky, um, asked if, she, if I wanted her to do a reading on me. And I, I agreed, because yes, I wanted guidance. What was so neat, because she didn't just pull cards for me. She connected with my higher self and pulled cards for me, right? So she was able to tell me what my higher self has been trying to tell me that I haven't been able to hear. And the reason, I haven't been able to hear what my higher self was trying to tell me was because the subconscious programming of the ego mind, all that negative self-talk, you're not worthy, you're not enough, you know, you, you don't fit in anywhere, there's no place for you, all that stuff was running in my head. So while the ego was trying to get me, I mean, the, my higher self was trying to give me clear direction on the path of my soul. My ego was interfering with my ability to hear its guidance because I couldn't silence that tape because I didn't realize it was the ego of mine. I was really believing those things. And while I wouldn't say to you consciously, yeah, I don't think I'm worthy of love, I wouldn't say that. I would say, yeah, I know I'm worthy of love, but yet my behaviors were not reflective of that. So I've been what you call shadow bump. Let me explain to you what shadow boxing is because you know, this all began, I was asking my angels, what can I do to help the collective right now? What can I do? What difference can I make? And they said, you can heal yourself. You can break the ancestral curses and traumas associated with, you know, those generational things we come into, those patterns, you know, that we're born into. You could break that ancestral patterning for your whole lineage, right? And you could set an example for your brothers and sisters to give them the courage and strength to do the same for themselves. So this is why I share the things I share with you. One, it allows me to work off all that negative karma I racked up because I got a lot of good deeds to do to outweigh the bad I did in this world and I'll make up for it. I'll make up for it. I have full faith in that, right? And y'all help me to do that. But not only could I share my story, but truly heal myself. You know, we want to heal our world. It starts with healing ourselves. So our sharing today is going to be once Mandola Sky worked with me and I was able to get clear um, and understand what my higher self has been trying to tell me, um, I have a new understanding of an old problem. And for my birthday, this was the missing piece to the puzzle. When Mandola Sky said what my higher self was telling me was that you've done your healing work. 
You just need to rewrite the program. Quit telling yourself that story that you can't do this and you're not going to be accepted and you don't fit in. Quit telling yourself that story. Right? Because I've done all the healing work. Like, I'm near me in. Like, this is my present from spirit for my birthday. They gave me the final piece I needed of understanding, which is all I got to do is reprogram my subconscious mind, and I'm done. I'm off to my happily ever after, and yes, there will be challenges. So let me get into the whole story so y'all can understand why this is such a big present. And I want you to understand this is really hard for me. Like, this is really personal, okay? Um, and just know, the only reason I share is because I think a lot of you are going through the same thing, and we can help each other heal. You know, by turning our pain into our medicine and then sharing it with our brothers and sisters to help them heal. but for you to get the full gist of it, you need to understand. So I cleaned up about eight years ago, right? My life was a mess. I started piecing it together. And I, um, I'm i an earth angel, so I'm a caregiver. I always have a ton of things I'm taking care of, people. Um, and at that time, I was taking care of my late, now my late husband, Kenneth Dorn. Kenneth, I love you, miss you. Um, my son and all that. So when I got clean, I didn't really get to go socialize. I don't go anywhere. I stay home and take care of people. So I used that eight years to study and research astrology, as, you know, astrology, psychology, philosophy. You know, I, I read the Negamati scriptures. I really got into a lot of um, religious documents that weren't mainstream. And I learned a lot about universal laws. I just like really educated myself on a lot of stuff because I was trying to figure out why my life was such a mess. Right? I was trying to figure it out. So, I needed to be in hermit mode. I needed to be at home. Well, about um, March of 2019, so it's like, God, like a year and a half ago, my husband passed away. And uh, I was faced with now that it was one less person I'd take care of. It was just me and my son. Now I had to figure out, like, what's my life's purpose? What am I here for? You know, um, and how is I going to continue to support me and my son and take good care of us being a single mom? So I started praying on it and all this wisdom about my purpose and all this stuff. Well, then August. Um, who's like trained like 4,000 sound healers all across the country, travels everywhere, he's great, um, was there. And I, it was the Scorpio blue moon. It was the Scorpio blue moon when I met them. And we just had the blue moon, the hunter blue moon. Um, and I discovered I was going to go do sound healing. So that was like in May and August, like of last year. Well, I got my certificates in sound healing. I took my advanced course in Octavial repatterning and all this stuff. But then I didn't do anything with it. Like from August to March, I just sat in my house and hid, right? And I could feel spirit nudging me. It was like nudging me. Like, Quale, you got to go out into the world. Now, what are you going to do with this? Well, I was like not tech savvy. I didn't even really use Facebook. I didn't know anything about how to get out in the world and grow myself. You know, I hadn't been out in the world in like almost a decade. I didn't know how to be around people and stuff. So I hid. And you said you're hid. Well, then when the uh, COVID-19 struck, Jay was reaching out to all the sound healers, telling them that it was their duty and their responsibility right now as a light worker to start playing the bowls every day, go live. If all of us, all 4,000 of us all across the country would play every day, we would help combat Corona in our own way. And I thought that was so amazing, right? But it was real uncomfortable because it required me to step out my comfort zone and start going public. And if you watched some of my earlier videos, like I'm holding the camera and all this stuff. Um, and I knew sound healing was a calling of mine, but I really felt more writing and channeling messages. But that's what got me to 
come out of my, you know, to completely come out, so to speak, and start doing things online. It was only because my community needed me. Because if it would have been left up to me, I would have stayed hiding in the house forever. I mean, forever. So, because I resonated with being a light worker, of course I stepped up. So I started doing videos. And I started working off that negative karma I'd accumulated because I was helping a couple of people. And, but what happened that was so amazing was my self-esteem. I realized that I did have something to offer. And there were people that wanted to hear my message. And the more videos I did, the more I liked myself. I saw worth in myself. Because bottom line was, I didn't have any self-worth at all. So when I tell y'all, and I sincerely thank you all the time for um, supporting me and being with me as I grow through this, you don't know how much you do for me, how much you make all my dreams possible. The self-esteem y'all have given me, the encouragement. So it's continued getting me to press on to now create me like this little digital world I live in where I'm really, really happy. I feel really, really accepted. Okay, that's weird. The water just stopped. That was okay. That was synchronistic. So, um, I lived in this little digital world that I created where everyone liked me and I fit in and found me a little niche. Well, spirit started saying, hey, time to leave the nest, sister. Time to go to the real world. Time to go get around, people. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. And about six months ago, I went to a uh, root shop in Fort Walton, who I've known from the day. I'm gonna kill her. There's one of the little young ladies at the center I work and volunteer at. She's special needs. She's called my phone like five times back to back and she never does that. So I'm so sorry for the disruption. Um, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna make sure she doesn't need anything important, but bless her sweet heart. Like she doesn't even understand. So sorry for the interruptions. Totally lost my train of thought. spirits thank god there it is i was like oh no <laughs> the spirits like you need to get out of the house well i went to roots about six months ago and i just left them a cord because like i knew they were my tribe but i don't think they knew well about three months ago um jen young lady who works there for jess uh, reached out and set me an appointment so i go in to this appointment and it's amazing she's like offering me all this amazing opportunity to come out into my community and I know that's what Spirit's been telling me I need to do. And so I do an event out there. And it went well. But, like, I immediately, instead of brainstorming, like, what I could do to start doing events out in my community, I decide, because I want to stay here, that I'm just going to start hosting events here and inviting a bunch of strangers to my house and all this really irrational shit. That's just not rational. Because I didn't want to have to go in my community, but I wanted to be a part of the group, right? So, um, I was, in fact, I was supposed to host an event here today, and I canceled it. Because um, Spirit didn't want me doing that. Spirit wanted me out in the community, not having people here. So, we had like a mini crisis come up with my son with strangers and me fearing that someone was taking advantage of him. So immediately, that was my sign from spirit that no, you're not allowing anyone to come on your property for no events. You need to protect your child and yourself. You know, you're here by yourself. So 
So I know Spirit's like not giving me that out. Like, yeah, you want to connect with your community? You're going to have to go out in your community. So all this stuff's going on in my head, okay? All this stuff about I got to get out there. Well, this is what it starts happening. And this is very important. So I created this digital world I live in where all y'all accept me and all y'all like me, right? And I can live in this little world, but I've never really grounded it into the physical because it's not live people that I can touch and communicate with and be in their energy and them in mine, right? So when I started giving y'all all that stuff, like about a week or two ago, when I started questioning politics and my path and my purpose and the fate of the world, it was because I started thinking, what if I leave my house and I go out into the world and the world doesn't accept me? What if it's illusion, right? And if that's illusion, what if, and, and now this isn't me, this isn't empowered me. This is little wounded me. Because you know in the spiritual community, we don't think like the majority of the world. So we're always kind of outcasted and shunned, you never really fit in. So my childhood growing up with my dysfunctional family, you know, made me feel like I wasn't enough. I was never going to fit in. And then my childhood mirrored that to me. And then everything since. So I didn't realize how much that tape in my head was programmed. Like, instead of looking for opportunities and ways to put myself out there, I would always think, I can't, I won't, all this stuff. Right? So, I realized I'm not going to get to hide out in my house anymore, okay? That I got to start getting out into the world. Because spirit, Spirit's really pushing me, like, do you want to repeat this cycle again? If you don't do everything in your power to go connect with your community, and you choose to stay sitting in this house hiding behind that camera, that phone, you know? Um, we're going to make you repeat the cycle. And I don't want to be alone, guys. I don't want to not feel connected. You know, um, I'm tired of this cyclical loop of dysfunction. I'm done. So, like, I'm in this place of spirit. Like, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know? So, it's taken me to first... <laughs> do the shadow boxing and see where my shadows are. My shadows were, they're not anymore because I removed my blocks. Um, really, you know, four self-worth issues. And then my shadow became the subconscious programming of now that I don't have the self-worth issues, I still got the tape running in my head. So because of my willingness to do whatever it takes, um, I told Spirit I was going to embark on this journey. So all these last couple of weeks, I've really been doubting stuff. And remember, I even told y'all that uh, last week. Remember I said I posted a post that said Spirit's been making me tap on my third eye? And I commented, there's like tapping good sense into my head. Well, when I was doing my tapping homework from Spirit the other day around noon, I was taking a little like lucid dreaming nap, and I was tapping. And I got this epiphany. There was this amazing like consciousness group in my area that was having this big Halloween festival at Blackwater State Park this weekend. And when I was tapping, Spirit was like, you need to go. Because that's probably the one event you could really take stuff to, right? So there was a drum circle. So, because it's not, you know, I've got my own insecurities and inner child wounding about going around people and being accepted. Can you imagine what my son goes through? So when I take him out in public, I have to be strong for him, right? I have to have my cup running over with self-love so I have enough to pour into his, right? So I don't typically go places where I'm not comfortable. So unfortunately, we, we don't leave the house much, right? Because I haven't been comfortable anywhere, but I'm getting over that. So let me tell you how this goes. So I tap this into my head, and I get this epiphany that that's where spirit wants me to be, that I need to go, that I need to go see how will it be you know quit saying you can't do it because your child's disabled or they're you know whatever you're telling yourself quit and just go so okay so this is where all this is going because it's it's very important that you understand this was my blog right so we're planning 
going to go Friday night at 8 o'clock, okay? So we get in the car, we get there, and, uh, and I know most of these events are very quiet. They're like meditative. I said, is it quiet? Like, you're not quiet. So I was hoping just to show up for the drums, drum circle. But when we got there, it was like 15 minutes before the drum circle. And it was so sweet. When we got there, we were kind of parked in a weird spot. And the greeters came, Merlin, that runs the, the group, or is a moderator for it. I don't quite know all his role. Uh, Merlin Andrews, I think. Very nice gentleman I got to meet. Was with another guy, and they came to greet us, all that, and make sure we knew where we were going. Very polite and loving. And when I introduced myself to Merlin, because I was hoping to be in there, the guy that was with him says, oh, you're Carla Dorn? I follow your stuff. And there was like my angel showing up on the path from spirit, saying it's okay, you're gonna be welcome here. Like, right, because this, this took a lot of courage for me to go do this, right? You, you think it's no big deal, you know what I'm saying? But when you, like this wasn't just about going meet some people. This was about finding out if I was living in illusion and I was ever gonna be accepted, right? Like, have I finally worked hard enough on myself where I can find my tribe? Have I found my people or do I have to continue journeying alone? Because it's lonely here, guys, for me. Like, I got four pets and my son's nonverbal. And I'm home all the time. There's no one to talk to, right? I just wanna find my tribe. And more than that, I wanna find my person. I want to find the person I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with. I want to be healed enough so I'm at that frequency, that vibration to attract my soulmate. The person I can create my life's work with and settle down with. So like, this wasn't just about going and being accepted. This was about, am I nearing that end of my journey where finally the road doesn't have to be alone. And, and there's a, I found my place in this where I fit, right? Because you can say whatever you want, like, because, you know, I spend a lot of alone time. My alone time is very important to me. That's when I connect with spirit, but I would like to have the option, right? I can still think about alone time, but I'd like to have the option. Okay, so let me tell you how it goes, y'all, because this is very emotional for me. So we get out of the car, and we're walking up, and my son didn't speak, but I know his language, and he sees, like, he can feel my energy, because, like, it's intense, and it's real, real quiet around the campfire. And my son starts going, but. And when he says, but, it's like saying, but, mom. And he would say, but, and I'd be like, Seth, you gotta do this, like, whispering real low. You gotta do this, you gotta do this for mom. I don't ask you to do that. And he's like, uh-uh. And so all he's doing is like, but, uh-uh, but, uh-uh, because they can't hear me negotiating with him. So finally, I realized that I do not want to meet these people with us being disruptive. So, like, I'm going back to the core. So we start walking back to the car. And I, I try not to be frustrated with him because I get it. I get it. Like if I got social anxiety and I'm considered somewhat normal, right? Can you imagine what he goes through? Like, and he's thinking, Mama, just because you're doing inner child work and this is your test from spirit, this is not mine. I am not at this level of my journey where I got to go face a bunch of strangers. That's on you. But because we're a team, I couldn't go if he didn't go, right? So I was very loving with him, and I got him in the car, and then I shut the door, and I walked to the back of my truck, and I looked up, and I started to cry, and I said, Spirit, really? Really? And it was so funny, because in that moment, the light bulb went off, and this was so great. This is the light bulb moment. Was, And I actually even said to myself first, I'm going to get a bottle of wine because, like, I don't drink wine anymore. I used to drink a little bit, like, to relax. And I don't drink anymore because it lowers my vibration too much and it makes me feel horrible. And I said, I'm going to get a bottle of wine. And then I thought, no, I'm not. Why would I go cause harm to myself because me and my son don't fit here? Why would, and this is the light bulb moment, why would I want to be around a situation that doesn't gel well for me and my son. Like that isn't welcoming or accommodating or, or we can't participate in. Why would I want to be a part of that? That was the light bulb moment. That's what spirit has been
been trying to get me to see. This was my present from Spirit. Was that Yo Yo quit wanting to be places that don't want you to be there or that don't fit for you to be there? Like, don't worry about, like, so they didn't like you. Why would you want to be around people that don't like you or don't accommodate you, right? So, so I didn't want to go get the wand anymore, but I did, and it was so sweet. Ananda, who would be rope darting today and um, toning with me for the sound healing portion, but she participated in all the weekend festivities, and she's really wore out. But it was so neat. Our spirit did this. Spirit made it to where she was running late for the thing, so she couldn't come to her, the house to get her clothes. So even though I couldn't take Seth to go be a part of the group, I still had to get her her clothes. So... I was discouraged only because I, I was really hoping that these people were my tribe. And that means I still got to go to find my tribe. And I, I didn't want to keep doing that. I'm tired of looking for my tribe. And this is so neat. And this is such a happy ending. This is so great. So, um, so while I was backing up and going to try to find a closer spot to park so I could leave Seth in the core for a moment, it dawned on me that... Yes, I was sad because it didn't look like this was going to be a good fit for me and Seth. And that I would have to continue searching on for my tribe, right? But I was okay with that because at least I didn't want to go drink because, oh my God, like I couldn't be a part of things and I'm never going to be a part of things because my inner child wounding was like, see, this is just further reinforcement. You don't fit anywhere. It's like, you know, you can't be a part of the group. You're not worthy, all that crap. It was so neat. So I'm moving the car closer to go find Ananda. And this angel, this sweet angel, I wish I would have got his name, sees I'm like trying to park and it's really dark. And he comes up to my car and I don't know if he saw what happened or he could just tell by my energy I was stressing. And so I rolled down my window or whatever and I said, yeah, I need to get close to the fire. I need to bring these clothes. My, I can't stay. My son doesn't really want to be here. And you know what he did? And this is so crazy. This was such confirmation for me from spirit. He went through like all kinds of trouble to like find me a spot right there by the fire where Seth could sit in the corner. And what was so weird was he said, why don't I find you a spot close by the fire and then he can sit in the core and you can watch me. Now, I would have never even suggested that because you know how many times I've wanted to participate in something and I've had Seth who didn't want to participate and I had my car parked right there and I could see him and wanted to participate with the group and people looked at me like I was crazy for leaving my kid in the car even though I could see him you know what I'm saying like the AC is on his side I could see him but the judgment and stuff I would get so like I would have never even suggested that ever because I'd been burned so much. So it was so beautiful and Spirit knew that's what I needed. That's what my situation required for me to participate. And that was my confirmation from Spirit that I found my tribe. Because they knew what I needed and they showed up for me. Right? And I know that seems like a little thing to y'all. Um, for me, it's not. And the, the lesson in all this for y'all is this. One thing I've learned with my inner child work is so like, okay, so things keep happening and spirit keeps sending me stuff. I keep sending me people, potential, you know, forevers, which don't value me and don't take me seriously. And But with each situation, I have the opportunity to practice setting my boundaries sending that mess on its way because I won't settle and this is the message I come with y'all today don't settle don't because the second you settle and say this is all I deserve it's the second you stop growing keep pushing keep pushing face your shadows Face those underlying core beliefs that said you don't deserve this. You're not worthy of this. Nothing good's ever going to come your way because 
You're not worth having something good. That's not true. Nothing good hasn't come your way yet. Because it takes seeing what we don't want to know better what we do want. But if we see what we don't want and we take it, then Spirit's saying, well, no sense sending her nothing else. She's willing to accept that. And for a long time, I have accepted way less than what I deserve. I'm really proud of myself though now because I don't. Like, I was recently very upset because I didn't know, um, like, someone was lying and deceiving me. So I didn't know about all that I was being made a fool of. But the beautiful part was the second I found out, I cut that shit out of my life. The old me would have not. You know, and, and Spirit keeps sending me stuff. It's always sending me stuff to see what I'm gonna do with it. You know, and I'm not gonna settle. Because the second I settle, they're gonna quit sending stuff. Heal yourself. Face your shadows. Look at every partner that shows up for you as a mirror, mirroring back to you something about yourself. And this is the thing, this is the thing, right? So, like, so I know because I've done all this work, Spirit's getting ready to send me someone, right? And I'm so scared when they show up that they're going to be, like, dysfunctional and toxic because um, I want Spirit to already know I learned that lesson. Like, I know what to do with it if the toxic, dysfunctional toxicity shows up. I'll cut it out, right? But I don't want it to show up again because I want Spirit to know that I already learned the lesson. Have to keep showing up. You know, because that's where I'm at. Like, I'm doing all this work because I will have my happily ever after. I will. Because I won't stop till I get it. And my happily ever after I ain't a whole lot. I just want someone to love and share my life with that's positive and happy. And I want my son to speak, which he will one day. Um, I just want to not be alone in with my tribe and be of help and service to humanity and like the things I want are the really earth shattering things but when you have a wounded inner child those things are hard to achieve because before that wonderful life partner that's going to complete you can show up first you have to be whole and complete within yourself right two whole people come together to make one not too happy. So, I think, you know, there's here. Uh, oh, you know it's Mercury retrograde. It is just a mess over here. Y'all have had to deal with so much. What's up, bud? Oh, oh. Um, I'm, I'm working right now. I cannot get up. Oh. You, hey, hey. Oh. You have to give me oh. 10 minutes, okay? Oh. He's really good. Oh, y'all saw me just rubbing his head. Like, I'm working through them, though. And this is uncomfortable as hell, so. Um, so, I think it's really encouraging. You know, that was amazing what that guy did for me. Like, and he doesn't even realize it. And he's probably that nice to everybody. You know, it was probably nothing unusual what he did, but somebody was dealing with inner child wounding issues. It was everything. But I gotta keep pushing. I can't quit or give up. You know? So, I work with um, an Andorra crystal ball. And um, what Andorras are, in fact, this is it right here. So, what Andorra crystal technology is, the great city of Atlantis, um, Andorra crystals is what powered Atlantis. And the manifestation ability of this crystal to dial in can expedite your manifestations. So, we're going to work with Andorra today because I have a request for all of y'all. We're going to set an intention for the Andorra because I would like to see my birthday some more. So, I got this huge blessing from Spirit of learning about reprogramming my subconscious mind, which we're going to get into that more in a second. But um, it was my birthday present from Spirit. Um, so I'm putting into the Endure right now that when your solar return comes, that means when, you know, your birthday comes, your solar return, 
that you have a huge inner child breakthrough. Right? That you bust through some amazing barrier, something that's kept you stuck. And I want you to know this very importantly. Just because you're going to break through an amazing block, that means it's going to be more challenging. So what I'm asking for is actually for your inner child wounding to get triggered so you can see your shadows and do the necessary shadow boxing required. The shadows never go away, right? They're always there. But when you know what they are, right, and they start to crop up, you can put them in their place like it's never going to go away like I will probably always um have some remnants of that subconscious tape in my mind that says I'm not good enough I'm not enough but this thing about it is now is when it happens I know okay that's just a thought that's not me thank you ego mind for bringing that to my attention because okay so the ego mind's job is to protect you right the ego mind is supposed to keep you alive so it wants to protect you from everything it was really supposed to be just a fight or flight response the ego mind for survival purposes fight or flight you know but what happens is when a person is not connected to their soul their ego takes over right and so their ego responds to everything like you're gonna go to the store right and it's raining outside the ego says no don't go you're probably getting a wreck you know what I mean like the ego mind jumps in for every scenario, even the ones that are life or death. So it's always throwing its insight in, but the thing is now when it comes up, I know, okay, thank you, ego. I appreciate you knock that devil off my shoulder. I thank you for sharing that wisdom that all that negativity and you know, um, possible what ifs of cataclysmic situations that could happen, but that's enough. Um, I'm gonna handle that, I'm gonna worry about that and I'm going to live my life and not be a prisoner of my ego mind. Because that's what the ego does. It makes you a prisoner. So what I'm asking for with the Endora Crystal Bowl is not going to be easy for you to do. Like for you to have a huge inner child breakthrough before your soul will return, there's going to be a lot of events, people, places, and things that are going to trigger you to give you an opportunity for your wounding to come up for you to see it. Not that you'll ever get rid of it, but so you can identify that as one of your shadows. And when it starts to resurface, when a situation comes up that triggers it, you can put it in its place and not let it run your life. Not stay in the prison that our ego has created for us. So... Oh my god like one more phone call that was someone different like no one's rung my phone all day i start doing a video and everybody's calling it's mercury retrograde so anyway so the wish i'm making for your lunar return is gonna um involve some triggering and probably some ugly situations because like look man i've had some crappy shit come my way this year to give me an opportunity to be triggered, to see it, to heal it, right? So just know if, because we worked with this technology, if your inner child wounding triggers don't amp up, identify them as an inner child wounding issue, a shadow to bring into the light, to see it more clearly, to be aware of it, so it doesn't ruin your life. But do expect, you know, it's not easy doing inner child work, doing shadow work. It's really difficult work. There's a 
hog thing of hog. My late husband, when he was at his deathbed, I said, what animal, when uh, I see it, will I know it's you? He said, a hog, and there was just a hog. Thank you, kitty. your higher self is telling you to go but you can't tell what your higher self and what your ego okay so this is how you tell follow your bliss follow your bliss your soul is always going to point you in the direction of what feels better always so because lately like I've been real confused because my ego has got me such in a tissy with all this negative self-talk like I haven't known what I'm supposed to be doing because I've, it's really convinced me of things like no you and Seth can't go out into the community because he's special needs and they're not gonna make accommodations and they're not gonna like you anyway and all this stuff so but my soul had me all excited like I really wanted to go I was like really 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 happy and it made me feel good to think about going connect and getting to know people from my community and you know taking my show out of the backyard right um, so that was my soul and the way I could identify the direction of my soul, my higher self, was by following my bliss. And not letting my ego mind, with all that negativity, talk me out of it. Right? Because the ego was working overtime to try to tell me all the reasons I couldn't do it. But yet I was still excited. I still wanted to go. You know, just like I want to start doing you know, my new moons and roots and my full moons at the Corvus Act and participating in the Refuge Recovery Group. My ego's telling me I can't do it. And I'm following my bliss and I'm doing it. And my soul is showing me, yes, you can. And in fact, you're meant to. You know, but the time I spent here was really good because I, I got to educate myself and I got to build my self-esteem Y'all have been hugely instrumental. Um, but it was nice to see that my reality is an illusionary. 
and then I will be able to ground it in the physical, right? In the collective, in my community, like with actual warm soul and not just my digital friends. Um, so guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm getting a rubber band. This is a bracelet, but I've got a special rubber band I've been putting around my wrist to remind me. And I've got an alarm set on my phone to go off like three or four times a day to let me check where I'm at. So like whenever the alarm goes off, I immediately think, okay, what was I just thinking? To check myself, was it a negative thought? Was it a positive thought? Have I been building myself up today or breaking myself down? I've also been, um, because you know, when you're rewriting the subconscious programming, it's very important that you're vigilant about it. So making it a point like now, um, just for this period of time where I'm reprogramming, very intensely listening to positive mantras when I sleep. You know, self-affirming mantras, like I love you, you're great, you're entitled, you know, whatever, right? Letting that rewrite my programming and my subconscious mind while I sleep. Um, the rubber band um, I'm wearing on my wrist so that whenever I see it, it reminds me to say something nice to myself. Because um, a lot of you are probably at this point in your journey where you've done your healing work, but you're still blocked. Like the beautiful relationship isn't flowing in, that better job isn't flowing in. And it's because, not because you haven't done the healing work, it's because you gotta rewrite the subconscious program that's running. It runs by default. Mandola Sky told me another thing. Um, it's like when you rewrite a computer, you know, you rewrite the hard drive of the computer. You've gotta reprogram all the new positive, better information in there. That's what you need to do. So that takes time. You gotta rewrite the program. So by listening to the mantras when I sleep, or um, I've been looking in the mirror, you know, three or four times a day for a couple of minutes, saying nice things to myself, you know, it's a series of practices. Cause listen, let me tell you, I take shit to the extreme. Spirit tells me I've done all my healing work, and all I gotta do is rewrite the program. Shit, I'm working overtime. I'm all over that because I want my happiness. I'll tell you, even if it, even if it took 10 more years, I'm not going to quit because I am worthy of that amazing relationship, that amazing job, that camaraderie with my community. I'm worthy of a tribe too, and I see that. But don't settle along the way because if you settle, if you start pushing forward and you stop believing in the dream of more, Spirit's going to say, well, no need to send her nothing. You can't send you something if you've already got your life too full. So it's another thing. We have to make space in our life for the new, right? So you got to clear out the old beliefs. Clear out the clutter, physical clutter, mental clutter, spiritual clutter, yoga, exercise, body movement. Um, because another thing I'm having to do in rewriting subject, subconscious programming is also um, get the trauma of those past experiences out of my cells because it's being stored in my cells. The trauma of uh, our pains and our trauma stored in our cellular body. That's why old people, when you see them they're old, they get all cringed in. It's because their cells are so constricted with all that stress and trauma. So um, I've been doing yoga on a regular basis and body movement dance to shift my energy to get all that trauma out of my cells to make room for the new memory. So I'm rewriting the program I'm getting it out of my body. And now spirit can send me something that's going to be more aligned with, you know, unconditional love and oneness. You know, um, so I'm relieved that I think I'm coming out the other side. In fact, I know, I don't think, I know I'm coming out the other side. So now I just have to rewrite my program and I can do that. And I'm sure many of you, that's all you need to do too. You've done the work, but you're still experiencing blocks. It's because you gotta rewrite the program and, and make it a conscious effort, dude. Like, spend time, like, really. If you're tired of suffering, you're tired of being the same shit, then get to a daily practice every day to rewrite the program. That's how it works. Like, I'm not looking to stretch this shit out over a year with a half ass effort. That's for certain. Shit, if I can do, you know, do like two hours of, of practices a day for 30 days and rewrite my program, that's the route I'm going. I've had enough pain. Thank you very much. I've had enough pain. Like, I don't know. I'm done. Okay. So this was all really personal. There was a lot of distraction and interruptions.
all this to show you. I'm just like you. I'm just somebody trying to be happy with themselves and then have that wonderful joy and love they feel for themselves be reflected to them in their outer reality. And I'm glad that I continue to do the work because I'm finally starting to see it show up in my outer reality. And I know things are good coming from me because I won't settle and take the ones that are bad. I'll set boundaries and I'll cut that shit out of my life and make room for the new. Do the work. It's going to be work. And I'll keep working with y'all and well, sharing. Y'all know me. I always got to do something silly. I hope I don't regret that. That's a smoke call. Okay. Hopefully the winds aren't blowing the wrong way. Okay, so let's do it. Yeah, we're going to get some. Okay, there we go, spirit. There's some pink smoke. There we go. Okay, so let's do our... Let's do our sound healing, guys. So if everyone would take a deep breath. Breathe in your worries, fears, anxiety. for us to release any ideas about ourselves that aren't grounded in love and faith and hope and worthiness that we dump all that extra baggage we've been carrying around all our lives we let it go we rewrite our story that we stay conscious that we are rewriting it we have to be deliberate to ourselves and loving to ourselves. We have to show ourselves the love we never received as a child if we ever want to see someone in the outer reality reflected back to us. It comes here first. And then the people you rendezvous with is just a mirror of that back. So be thinking about what ideas about yourself can you let go of? Focus on your breathing. Look, focus is coming. Focus. Long deep breaths in and out. Can you focus? Can you focus? Oh. Like to call. Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, the fairies, dragon energy, crow, grasshopper, bee, Archangel Raphael with this healing, loving light to heal our hearts and our minds negative belief systems that have tripped us up and held us stuck in cyclical loops and patterns. Archangel Michael's sword of truth to show us the truth of ourselves and our situation and our world. Archangel Metatron, my favorite of the Archangels. He works with the violent flame of
right alone. We vow we are divinely slain. In mighty cosmic power, we are the light of God shining every hour. We are the violet flame blazing like the sun. We are God's sacred power freeing everyone. Negative beliefs of the ego mind. 
our world. This is what we can do to help our communities in the turbulent times ahead, is to heal ourselves, raising our overall vibration, lifting the overall vibration of humanity and the collective of Mother Earth. self-esteem and the belief in myself to remember what my dreams were and begin realizing them. And I'm forever grateful. Um, and we'll be doing a new moon ceremony November 15th at Roots and then hopefully a full moon ceremony on the 30th at the Corma Shop. So I'll keep y'all posted. Um, blessings. Guys, I will um, link my Vimo in the um, 
description of the post. Um, if anybody felt in their heart or alignment wanted to make a love donation, it would be greatly appreciated. Christmas coming of the holidays, you know. Um, so I would appreciate it if it's in alignment. And I will see you for the new moon. I love y'all.